Here we go. Yeah, I'm sure it was. All right. With these, remember, we are talking about um, graphs in three dimensions and where three things are intersecting. So no longer is it like a line. Line's two-dimensional. You have like length and width. Now we have like length, width, and like height. So kind of think of a plane, like a ceiling. So we're going to be talking about where does the ceiling intersect like the back wall, which intersects like the wall with the windows. Okay, so you're going to have like three points to dictate like a location. Okay, instead of like, you know, a point on a grid. Does that make sense to you guys? Okay, because we don't live in a two dimensional world. We're not doodle bob. Okay, we're more like SpongeBob. Okay, you had a length, width, and height. So here, we need to find three things. We need to find X, Y, and Z. Okay, X, yeah. Okay, so we need to find those three things. So if we look over here, this is back substitution. This is the basic stuff. Very basic, okay? So we have X equals 10. So if I write that over here, I only need to find two more things, Y and Z. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at my two equations. I have the middle equation and the bottom equation. The middle equation only has X and Y. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this equation to solve for Y. So X is 10, I'm gonna substitute that in. That's gonna give me three times 10 plus two Y equals two. So 30 plus two Y equals two. Go ahead and get Y by itself by subtracting 30. Two Y equals negative 28 divided by two. That gives me y equals negative 14. All right, so I have y equals negative 14. Now, I need z. So now I'm going to use that bottom equation because it has x, y, and z in it. All right, so I'm going to use a different color. So I have x plus y plus 2z equals zero. Well, X is 10, Y is negative 14, Z is 2Z equals zero. And then I just solve for Z. So I get negative four plus 2Z equals zero. Make sense? And I get 2Z equals four, divide by two, z equals two. So this is my answer. Okay, x, y, and z. Got it? Okay, three variables, all right? I need three equations, one, two, three. Got it? Okay. So this is back substitution. Now, there is a, another um, type called the Gaussian method. It's talked about Gaussian elimination, okay? And this is a pretty difficult uh, concept. This is much more difficult. So what I need you to do is just kind of watch as I go through it and attempt to relearn. So it says the goal is to get the system into row echelon form. Just meaning, okay, you want it to be kind of like a triangle. Notice X starts in the first equation, Y is in the start in the second equation, and Z in the bottom. Do you guys see that? Okay. So that's called row echelon uh, form. Now we start with what's on the left. It says X minus 2Y plus two Z equals nine. Then it says negative X plus three Y equals negative four. And then it says two X minus five Y plus Z equals 10. So how do I go from this to this? 
okay? Now, you are not going to be required to do this method, okay? Your calculator will do it for you. But let's see if I can show you everything that's going on. Who's Gasani? Gauss? That's what it is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he's just a really smart mathematician. Yeah. Dang, bro. From the olden days. <laughs> yeah. Gasani sounds 10 times better. Like, it does. like, when you think about it, think about creating, like, in math, just like, it doesn't seem like a good idea. But, all that. Uh, think about like creating a whole section in process in math. The main just made it up. Yeah, pretty much. But when you think about it, like that's pretty wild. Like you just created or like made up this whole thing, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh my gosh, it holds true like all the time. Like the dude is smart. So, all right, here's what I'm doing, and you at home. I just want you to follow along. I'm going to do my best to show you how to go from one thing to another. No one. You don't think so? Not even close. Not even close. style. He didn't have the drip. All right. Here is how they went from one side to the other. So this is what we started with. And again, there is no need to copy this down, but this is what's happening from uh, going from one section to another. So these are my three equations. And what I need to do is get it so my first equation starts with x. So I'm not gonna do anything to the top equation. I'm just going to rewrite this. So x minus 2y plus 2z equals 9. Okay? So I did nothing with that. Notice it starts with x. The coefficient of x is 1. That's very important. Now, the second line, what I need to do is get it so it starts with y, and that the coefficient of y is 1. Now, if I look at that second equation, all right, so this was my first equation. That's why it's in blue. The second equation, I need to get this green equation to start with y, just a plain y. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this. I'm going to take my first equation, my blue one, And I'm going to take my second equation, my green one, all right? And I don't want x. Do you see how they're opposites? I'm going to use elimination. So opposites add. When I add, the x's cancel. Negative 2y plus 3y is y, right? 2z plus nothing is 2z. 9 plus negative 4 is 5. So this second equation becomes y plus 2z equals 5. Right? Is that what it says on the paper? No, no, no. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now my third equation, it's going to be in red. I need this to start with Z, right? Well, that's kind of, it's kind of the difficult one, right? Because the first one I added the two, but now I have to get rid of all the other stuff. And this is where it gets weird, okay? So let's see what I can do. All right. So I have this, I don't know, I'm hoping it works out. So I have this blue equation and I have this green equation. 
All right, so what can I do here? I don't know. But I do know, let's see, I'm going to try it one time. You guys ready for it? Yes, yeah, I'm not. I am not yeah, ready for this. got to have faith in you. Yeah, you're yeah, right. You're smarter than this G dude. Yeah, well, this is on a, it's Gauss. Gauss. Yeah. Gauss. You're smarter than Gauss. Yeah, yeah you're about making stuff up like you. No, not yet. All right, yeah. so what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do is I am going to, let's see. Hmm. Where do I want to go from here? Yeah, I, I'm trying to like, no, here we go. Give me a second. Give me a second, Hansi. Give me a second. All right, let's see. So I took those two. Now let's take. Ah, here we go. So I took the blue one and the green one. Let's take the blue one. And let's take the red one. Yeah. Okay. And I'm going to eliminate that because this seems kind of weird. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this one by two. See where this goes. This gives me 2x minus 2y minus 4y. plus 4z equals 18. I'm going to rewrite this red equation. So I have 2x minus 5y plus z equals 10. Notice my x's are the same, so I'm going to subtract. They cancel. Negative 4 minus negative 5 is y, 4 minus z is 3, so I have 3z, 18 minus 10 is 8. Now, I have these two equations, the green one and the black one. You guys see that? So I'm going to take the green one, y plus 2z equals 5. I have the black equation, y plus 3z equals 8. Notice, my y's are the same, so I'm going to subtract them. We get negative z equals negative 3. z equals 3. Is that what's written on the paper? Yeah! Still got it. That was actually when, when I saw now, that now, that's all the work just to find Z. I didn't find X. I didn't find Y. I found Z. Now, how do you find X and Y? So, how do I find X and Y? So, I'm going to take Z. Okay, I'm going to take Z and I'm going to plug it back in. So, I have Y. I have y plus 2 times 3 at 6 equals 5. So that would give me y equals negative 1. Right? Now I have y and I have z. Well, I'm going to take y. I'm going to plug it in. So I have x minus 2 times negative 1. Well, negative times negative is a positive, so that gives me x plus 2. Plus 2 times 3, that's 6. That's x plus 8 equals 9. That's x is 1. So my three numbers, all right, all of this just to give me those three things. You guys got that? You guys see that? All of this work, I'm not doing it again. Why did you like set up the first equation? How did you know there was a first equation? 
uh, mattress <laughs> size? No, like I'm just naked. Like. No, because um, I actually studied this and like I did it in college. It's just kind of something I did, kind of something I know. No, and uh, the truth behind it is this. Here's the Gaussian elimination method. It's elimination, okay? I have three equations, okay? I know what to do when I have two equations with two on those, right? If I give you that, you can do it through elimination. So what I did is I took the first two equations, combined them to get rid of the X. Then I took, I could have taken these two or these two. I can't, I can't take the blue and green again. So I could take the green and red or the blue and red. I took the blue and red. I eliminated X again. Now that gives me two equations with two unknowns. That one equation was green, the other one was black. I combined them to eliminate and find Z. Then I used back substitution. It's a whole lot of work. Wait, can you do it one more time? No. Here's what I need you guys to do. Okay, here's what I need you guys to do. Are you guys at home following along? Come on, who's at home? All right, if you guys don't participate, then I'll just end the Zoom. Yes. Oh, okay. Everybody get out their calculator. Everybody get out their calculator. This is how you do it. All right, so. Cody, here's what I need you guys to do. Everybody, turn on your calculator. Come on. Huh. That's funny. If you said it before, I didn't know you were a comedian. You said it, you said, oh, that was last week. Yeah, you didn't have a web assignment last week. All right. Can everybody see um, the problem we started with on the left at home? And can you see the calculator? Is everybody following me? Okay. Yes. This is where it gets a little weird. Okay. I'm going to teach you something new. Okay. It's a matrix and you need to follow along. If you wish to take notes, you can take notes or you can just watch this video again. So in order to get to a matrix, this is your best friend, okay? What I need everybody to do is hit the second button, which is either blue or yellow. Now, everybody find X minus one right above it in a different color. Mine's blue because second was blue. Jake, yours is going to be yellow. Hit the X minus one and we get to the matrix screen. Does everybody's screen look like this? If yours is not, yeah, we're about to change that. Does yours look like mine? Okay, now we are going to go over to edit. Everybody go over to edit and hit enter. Whatever's in here is in here. It doesn't matter. Now, how do I change this part up at the top? You're wondering, why does mine say three times three? How many equations do I have? How many variables do I have? Three by three. Make sense? If you have two equations, you better have two unknowns. Here's the trick. Here's the catch. You have to have one equation for every variable. Meaning if you have two variables, you need to have two equations four variables, four equations. If you have four variables and three equations, you can't do anything. All right, you're stuck. You can't solve. So I have three variables, X, Y, and Z, and I have three equations, one, two, three, I'm good to go. So everybody type in three by three. Now you're wondering, where do these numbers come from? They are the coefficients of the variables. 
The first column is your X column. Notice the X's are lined up. This column corresponds to this column. This column is going to correspond to this column. Last but not least, this Z column will correspond to this column. So, you must include the sign, okay? So, and if it's zero, if there is nothing there, it goes in as zero. So notice here, I'm missing the Z. I must include that space, it must read zero. So everybody type in one. Enter, negative two, enter, two, enter. Brings me down to the second line. Negative one, enter, three, enter, zero, enter, two, enter, negative five, enter, one, enter. Probably because you were in the name function. If you're having an issue, make sure you go back to the matrices. So you're going to hit second mode to quit. Then you're going to hit second matrix, go over to edit, and go to the first matrix A. You're going to change that to three by three because we have three equations with three unknowns. Now, these three, red, green, and blue, should look like mine. Are we all good? We Gucci? Everybody go back to the home screen. So second mode, we're back here. Wait, how do you get back to the home screen? Second mode. Now, there's different ways to do this. I like my way, okay? Bradley teaches it a different way. I like my way. It, for whatever reason, it just makes more sense to me. We're going to go back in. So second matrix, we're going to go over to edit again. Now we're going to go down to B. And how do I get, how do I get these dimensions? These dimensions, I have three equations, right? The first number is the number of equations. I have three equations. How many answers are there to each equation? One. So there are three equations with one answer. This column, And these, this column better be the same. It's my answer matrix. So everybody go to nine, negative four, enter, and 10, enter. Are we good? You can hit the down button. So you go second, matrix, go over to edit. You're gonna go down to B. We're still setting it up. We haven't done the answer. This is set up, okay? Here's, remember all that work I did? Okay, and I know you're kind of like, this ain't easier, but it is. Because once you get good at it, it takes you less than a minute to solve these. Here we go. Now, this is the only thing you need to write down. Okay, and I'll write it down on the next screen. Okay, so let's go back to the home screen. Here's what you guys need to write down. Up here. A inverse B. That's it. That's all you need to write down. That's what you need to memorize. You need to know how to put all this in. That's your work. Ready? If you're showing me your work, I'll show you what it's going to look like on ad. This is just proving to you how to do this. Ready? Here we go. We're going to go back into the matrix. We're going to hit enter on A. Notice A came in my home screen, right? Inverse. We hit this X minus one button. See that? Does everybody's look like mine? 
No, I, you beat. I, I have you can watch the video on YouTube later. How far do I have to get that? Yeah, what do I do? X I'm minus I'm one. Here? Do I hit second move? Give me an no, you didn't call it back. You have to go back. Watch. I'm at the home screen. To call it up. I go second matrix. Now I'm under the name side. I hit enter on A. And then I hit inverse. Now I need to call up B because I needed to read A inverse B. Inverse is the minus one. So now I go down to B. My screen looks like this. Jay, does yours look like this? Hit enter. What are those? Your three answers, right? What do you think the first one corresponds to? X, Y, Z. It's the way we put it in. The first column was X, second column was Y, third column was Z. One, negative one, three. Pretty nice, right? Answers. All right, so you think it's a lot. Here you go. See this one? If you think it's a lot, go ahead. Do this one by Gaussian elimination. Or you can follow along. Here's, here's the work that you need to write down. Ready? Here's the work. Ready, Hansi? This is the A matrix. The A matrix will be one, negative two, two. See it? One, negative two, two. Do you see that? The B matrix, or not the B, the second row is negative one, three, zero. Why is it zero? There's no, there's no variable. Here is the third row. Two, negative five, one. The B matrix is nine, negative four, ten. And this is your work. A inverse B equals, okay? Then we got that. This is the same one as the one above it, right? This is the same one as that, right? Yeah. It was one, negative one, three, right? So your answer would be X equals one, Y equals negative one, Z equals three. That's all your work. It's all calculator work. See what I told you? Can you do it without a calculator? Yeah, do you want to? No. How do you get that negative one to pop up? X minus one button. It's all that matrix button. Everything involves Jake. Wait, where did you get the one minus one and three? That was the answer. The answer is Jake. But, but how do you check it? Check it. You can plug it in. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Let's look at these two. Watch. I have five minutes left in class. This is how, ready? Matrix I. One, negative three, one. Two, negative one, negative two. One, two, negative three. Matrix B. One, two, one. A inverse B equals, we get some answer. X equals Y equals Z equals. Ready for it? Here we go. A little quicker this time. We're going to go to the matrix. We're going to go over to add it. I'm going to enter my coefficient matrix in. It's a three by three. Three equations, three unknowns. Now I enter in my coefficients. So one, negative three, one, two, negative one, negative two, 
one, two, and negative three. Now I need to go back to the home screen. I need to go to my B matrix under edit. This is a three by one, three by one. I'm gonna enter in my coefficient or my answer matrix, which is one, two, negative one. And now I'm just gonna do A inverse B. So I go back to the matrix, go to the name, A, call it up, inverse, and call up B. Hit enter. Now, for this one, it says error, singular. That means something's going on here, right? So what does that mean? Well, do you think there's an answer? Now, okay, so this one says singular matrix, which means either it's no solution or infinite solution, right? One or the other. You're telling me to do all this work for it to be a singular matrix? Do you want to do it the other way just to find out it's a singular matrix? Yeah, Okay. Now, I'm going to run through the last one real quick, just because, I mean, we're running out of time. One, this is going to be a three by three. So it's one, one, negative three, zero, because there's no X in that equation one, negative one, negative one, two, zero. I go back, go into B, go down to edit, it's a three by one, negative one, zero, and one. Now I'm going to call up A inverse B. And this one says singular as well. So the key is now you have to figure out, is it no solution or infinite solution? All right. So you guys need to Google, what does the singular matrix mean? because I ran out of time.